Hey guys, Nerking101 here, and welcome to a new series on the channel where I am going to spin this wheel app on my phone that contains a ton of different theories and franchise and storyline from various anime, manga, and comic books. And then I will have to explain without any research that storyline or theories. Now, important to note that there will be a bit in this video where I go over the people involved in the project, the people that wrote it or drew it or created it, that will be researched. But that will be the only research that is done in this video, and that research will be done after I record the initial explanation. So, let's spin the wheel and let's see. So today, I will be explaining the Batman Fortnite crossover. Okay, so, first of all, I do play Fortnite, but I'm not like a Fortnite expert. I don't know a lot about Fortnite or Fortnite lore, so this is probably going to go terribly. Batman slash Fortnite Zero Point is the official canon crossover between Batman and Fortnite. I am 90% sure this book technically takes place in DC canon, meaning Batman has literally done all the things that happen in this book. Okay, so one day, Batman's just chilling in Gotham. Very standard. It could really take place at any point. Though, it does seem to imply it takes place after Tom King's Batman run. Because there's a lot of angst with Batman and Catwoman that could be related to the failed marriage. But, whatever. So, Batman notices this, like, giant, weird, purple storm in the sky. And Batman's talking to Gordon at the GCPD headquarters, and he's like, that's weird. So Batman goes to investigate, and he ends up getting sucked through a portal, where he ends up in the world of Fortnite. Now, Batman immediately realizes he doesn't know who he is, and he can't speak. Now, what's important to note is that because you obviously you can't talk in Fortnite, but what's important to note here is that Batman still has all his skills. Because in the Fortnite lore, when a fictional character is dragged into Fortnite, they lose their memory and their voice, but they maintain, like, I guess you could say their muscle memory. But that doesn't really make sense, because Batman still has his high levels of intelligence. So it's not just like he can fight, but he can also do anything. He's also still a super genius. Though his general intelligence does seem to have taken somewhat of a hit, because he lacked all his previous knowledge and experience like he had his general intelligence and his detecting skills but he like he doesn't remember superman so he doesn't remember anything involving like kryptonian technology so he's not able to theorize that perhaps the wormhole is similar to say the phantom zone so he can't make connections which i do think hurts his intelligence a little bit but whatever, moving on. So Batman immediately, because he's Batman, starts demolishing the other people in Fortnite. Like, he's destroying them. And what's interesting, and what I like about the crossover, is that Batman still doesn't use guns. Which, I like that. I like that the crossover paints Batman, and like, he still doesn't do it. Like, it's like a muscle memory. Even with all the guns in Fortnite, and everybody else does normally have guns, people like Batman do not use them. Which I really, really like. Batman eventually starts encountering other fictional characters. Anybody who was reading the book when it came out, there were Marvel crossovers that going on at the time as well. And people started asking, imagine if the final issue, you see Nick, and then there's a claw, and Wolverine shows up. Or we get some sort of tease. But no, there is no Marvel. To anybody watching this and think, oh, maybe Marvel characters show up. Nope, no Marvel characters show up in this book. But Batman's in Fortnite, and he eventually ends up encountering Catwoman. Who Batman and Catwoman almost like know something's going on here. Like they know they know each other. They don't know how, but like their love for each other still remains. But like they don't know who they are. So they start, they start fighting, and then they eventually start interacting. And then, eventually, the storm closes in, and they get reset. Because that's how Fortnite works. The game ends, and then they get reset. But what's cool about this is that they still keep all their gear, and they keep all any changes to their costumes. So, like, Batman arrives in his bath suit, and by the end, he's in, like, a Fortnite version of his bath suit. So if Batman starts doing it, 
he starts carving on the bastard, his nose. Because he can't speak, but he doesn't know how to write. So he starts carving his research into the bastard. And eventually, he makes like a wooden shack into like a bat cave bat shack. Like the bat shack would call it like a bat shack. Where he starts collecting gear and evidence he's gotten. And every game, he sees the location. He puts the coordinates of the thing on his armor. He looks down at his wrist. Sees, okay, that's where I gotta go. Goes to his shack. And looks at all his notes. And he does think like the cat is a friend. And then he writes um, on a batarang, the bat is a friend. And he throws it and Catwoman catches it. And then she has it in her possession. In the next reboot. So then she looks down, she's ever bad at the friend. They start investigating and they're like writing on the walls of the cage to communicate, trying to figure out what's going on. Harley Quinn shows up at one point, but she doesn't really do anything. But I do think Harley Quinn shows up. And then, this is where I'm going to struggle because I don't know anything about G.I. Joe. I think he's a G.I. Joe character. Maybe I just made myself look really stupid. But then, Snake Guy shows up eventually. And then Batman and Snake Guy start fighting each other. And then we cut to like the real world. Where people are talking. Like developers are talking about Fortnite. And they're talking about how all the uh, creatures. All the fictional characters or players in Fortnite. Had stopped playing Fortnite. They're not fighting anymore. Because they're just watching Batman and Snake Guy brawl. Because Batman and Snake Guy are having the crazy epic battles where they're just beating the crap out of each other. They are going all out, ripping each other apart, and then throughout the battle they start to respect each other, and this goes on for a while before they eventually discover a way out, and Snake Eyes, um, Snake Eye basically stays behind and buys time for Batman and Catwoman to escape, and then they escape, they get out, Batman Still doesn't have his memory back, but he gets out and he immediately is left with the night in this like outside of Fortnite world that isn't the DC universe. He gets that with a ton of other characters, and they get there, and Deathstroke is there, and Batman and Catwoman try to fight Deathstroke. They have a bit of a fight. Deathstroke ends up going away for a while. And then they just have this little mystery where they find this, like, port on the ground. They can't open it. Batman uses his big brain and the help of some of the other characters to make a way to, like, blast their way in. And eventually they find the portal that will let them go home. And then you have this really emotional scene between Catwoman and Batman where Catwoman doesn't want to leave because she kind of figures out that, like, if they go back to the DC Universe, Bruce is going to go back to being Batman full time and throw her to the side again. Like he's kind of aware that as long as they're in the DC universe, Batman will always have higher priorities than their relationship. And Batman will never invest fully in it. Maybe he's too busy being obsessed with being Batman and war on crime. But Batwoman and Death, they go through the portal and they return to the DC universe. And then at the end of the book, we get this horrible moment when you see a ton of like villains hanging out and they tease the Batman who laughs. I remember I've been enjoying the book until then. And then the Batman who laughs showed up. And I remember just looking at him and going, Great, he's here now. The Batman who laughs, for those of you that don't know, in an incredibly simplified version, is an evil version of Batman who became the Joker after he killed the Joker. Yeah, it's really dumb. So Batman killed the Joker, and Joker released this, like, toxin when he died that basically made Batman go crazy and become the Joker. He then proceeded to murder, murder Barbara, all of his children, uh, kill the Justice League, and force Superman and John, John Kent, who is currently Superman in the DC Comics as well, John Kent, the son of Kal-El, Superman, Clark Kent, the two Superman, yet them. Well, he forces them, using Black Kryptonite, to a slowly murder Lois and then kill each other. And then and then he turned John into him, one of his pets. The whole thing is really weird. He became a recurring villain for years. He'd been the star of two major events. The main villain of a Batman Superman book. He'd been a prominent character in Supergirl. I mean, just 
stop. Batman Who Laughs is like the face of Batman being an oversaturated cesspool in, in the DC Universe at this point. But yeah, that's Batman Fortnite. It's surprisingly good. So yeah, that's Batman Fortnite Zero Point. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's not meant to be. It's a Batman Fortnite crossover that with really good art, with a solid story, they were really trying to do something. And I actually had a lot of interesting stuff between Batman and Catwoman. It's definitely worth the read. If you can pick it up, I believe there's a trade of it. If not, it's only, it's only like five issues and floppies. So you can pick it up pretty cheap. I think you could probably get the whole thing for like 20 bucks. Definitely worth the read. It's no all-star Superman, but it doesn't need to be. As I said, it's a Batman Fortnite crossover. It's a lot of fun. But guys, if you enjoyed this episode of Poorly Explained Storylines, or whatever I'm going to call this theory, probably just going to call it Poorly Explained, let me know in the comment section down below. Tell me things you think I should add to the uh, wheel of decision making in which I will spin and decide what I talk about before one of these videos takes place. Just list all your ideas. Hopefully I can do it. I want to do it. I really enjoy making these. These are just so much fun. And, of course, tell me your thoughts. You know, and tell me your thoughts on Batman Fortnite Zero Point in the comments. Think well. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And above all else, guys, like the video if you enjoyed. And, most importantly, have a fantastic day.